welcome back. Final finds, 126, I think, um, which is a crazy amount when you think about how many records are featured in each of those videos times 126. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of records. Um, yeah, here we are. Welcome back. Um, it is Saturday morning here. What date are we? We are the 27th of February. Um, I can sense the end of summer on the horizon. Um, it's getting darker uh, a little bit earlier in the mornings now. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still enjoying it. Um, I haven't really got any plans today to listen to records and just maybe make a video. I've um, got a coffee here as usual. Um, hope everyone's doing really well. I uh, was inspired to make this because I really, really enjoyed um, a video I watched recently, which was uh, John and Headley's uh, country funk and soul video. Um, just so much knowledge. Um, I kind of felt a bit ashamed, really, when I, when I watched it and just the way they were talking and the, um, the details uh, was really impressive. And it was really informative and really funny. And I just, just had a smile on my face watching it. Um, and I think this is probably the only time I'm ever going to be shouting at the camera in frustration uh, when Headley's speaking, because generally I don't know a lot about what he's talking about. I'm always learning from him. But uh, he couldn't get the words out on uh, Willis Allen Ramsey. Um, so I was sort of not shaking my fist, but I was you know, waiting for him to say it. Um, but anyway, I, I played this this morning um, just because uh, Headley brought it up. And I thought it was quite funny that he couldn't remember the name. Um, but yeah, uh, amazing video, guys. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it kind of inspired me a little bit to get behind the camera this weekend. Um, yeah, so final finds. I'm going to have a sip of coffee before. Um, I, I also laughed heavily uh, on your comment last time that you sat through the whole video and it was worth it because the last record was the Steve Young record. Um, so I'm sorry for putting you through the torture uh, of, of the other handful of records before that. <laughs> All right, so this is a mixture of stuff that I didn't show in the last video going back a while. Um, some recent pickups and some little trade things. Um, this is the first one um, that I am really happy to get. Uh, I did I did a couple of, well, I did a trade with a friend who was happy to have this my way. Um, this is Motohiko Hamase Notes, hashtag, I should say, Notes of Forestry. Um, the, the strange, well, it's not really a strange story. Um, my friend Ben played this artist to me about sort of almost a year ago now, and he bought this, this three reissues that came out. This is a, this is, I should say, this is a, um, I guess like a Japanese ambient sort of record um, from 1988, originally only came out on CD. Um, the label, we release whatever the fuck we want records, uh, released three of these. Um, and he played me uh, music from the other two. It didn't really do that much for me. Uh, and I sort of forgot about it. And then I found on, this came up on my Spotify and it really blew me away and caught my attention. But I didn't realize it was the same artist. Um, and then he, and I mentioned to him that I've been really enjoying this. And he's like, oh, I played that to you already. And I just didn't even make the connection. Anyway, um, kind of a not really relevant story, I guess. Um, yeah, so this came out originally in 1988 in Japan only on CD. I guess you would say it's a Japanese ambient record. I would say kind of if you like uh, maybe this album or this album or this album it's kind of in that sort of territory um, it's mainly acoustic piano but it's kind of treated with um, some strange uh, synth effects to it um, it sort of wanders I guess you would almost say into modern classical territory um, yes yeah, super super interesting um, I love that cover too uh, it's just so simple and I also find it really interesting that it's called hashtag notes of forestry and that's what it was released as in 1988. Obviously the hash in recent years has sort of taken on a different, you know, sort of meaningless social media. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend this. I think it's really, really cool. Um, kind of under the radar. I haven't seen anyone else talk about it or show it. Um, but yeah, there we go. I've been spending a lot lately. Um, he did also give me the other two, but I'm not really feeling them as much. Um, so I'm not gonna show them or talk about them really. Um, We'll see. Anyway, in keeping with the uh, green and white covers theme that apparently I have here, this is the new Tone Poet reissue of Donald Bird, Bird in Flight. Um, absolutely wonderful. I can't, this is going, I love that sound. I wonder if you can hear it. Lovely. 
Ah, so nice. Um, I picked this up at my local store last week. Um, I kind of wasn't planning to, but it was sitting there and I wanted it. Um, yeah, Donald Bird, Bird in Flight, really, really wonderful. Um, there's a, a, yeah, I think there's a multitude of players on here that play on different tracks, so I'm not going to read them all out, but Jackie McLean, Hank Mobley, uh, Duke Pearson, um, Reggie Workman, of course, on here. This is a, a really nice hard bop record. Um, there's some Latin elements infused through it, uh, not too much though. Um, yeah, it's just really solid, really beautiful. Um, sounds absolutely fantastic as always. Um, yeah, really, really happy to get this. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, I've been really into a lot of hard bop stuff lately and I, I kind of think it's a bit underappreciated. Um, yeah, the the um, the drumming is really, really fantastic uh, from Lex Humphreys throughout, who I'm not overly familiar with his other work, but it's something that really caught my attention. Yeah, but yeah, really beautiful. Wonderful artwork too, isn't that stunning? There's been a bunch of tone poets that have just come out that I really want. I just can't bring myself to spend the money yet, but I know I'll probably cave in and get them eventually. Um, the new, I think, is it the Andrew Hill one or is it the Herbie Hancock? I'm having a mind blank. Anyway, I feel like I'm speaking very quickly. I better just slow it down, enjoy my coffee. Relax. Okay, apparently, and unintentionally, we've got another green cover here. Um, I was at a record fair, yes, a couple of weeks back. I think I mentioned this in my previous video. Um, and for, for one of my best scores in a long time, I did manage to find this for a measly uh, $2, uh, which is insane. Um, this is The Transfiguration of Blind Joe Death by John Fahey. Um, this is an original on the Riverboat label. I love this design. I think that's just super, super cool. Yeah, I really like it. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's John Fahey, so you kind of know what you're getting. Um, it's, yeah, it's be beautiful playing, uh, really interesting listening. Um, it's a bit noisy, so I need to give it a really deep clean, um, but I'm not complaining. Um, it, this is definitely kind of a lot more, I don't want to say sketchy, but the track's all really, really short. Um, you know, most of them sort of come in around a minute mark. Um, they don't go, oh, I'd say a two minute mark, I'd say that. Um, there's nothing that goes any a little bit more experimental or nothing that sort of goes in eastern direction. It's kind of a bit more traditional. Um, so this is, I think his, I want to say his fifth release. I get really confused in the, uh, the series of things um, because he has like, the, the volume series and there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, um, this originally came out in 1970, whatever that said there. Um, but yeah, re really happy. Did pick up uh, this for the same price also. This is volume four, um, which I enjoy a whole lot more. I think this is really beautiful. There's some really interesting tracks. He starts to pull in some Eastern things going on and some different modes with his playing. Um, I've talked about John Fahey before and just the way his playing can sort of ease your mind and take your, your thoughts away. Um, yeah, I kind of put these sort of records on when I'm in a, a sort of a mood to, I guess, um, take my mind off things or ease my mind or relax a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's music for a mood, I think. Um, yeah, really beautiful. This is on Tacoma. Um, this is a slightly later repress on the orange and purple label. Um, but yeah, I, I love this back cover here. Super wonderful. These, these are the sort of records I imagine just to be kind of fairly common in the US. Oh, my microphone has stopped recording. Um, I better better pause that. Hang on one sec. Back to where we were. This is one that I try to convince myself that I don't need and I should uh, sell it because I'm going through a bit of a purge at the moment, um, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, this is Solo Monk. Um, it's kind of one of those records where I guess for him, you really can't hide. It is just him and a piano. Um, but there's just something so charming about it and so Thelonious Monk that I, I just can't get rid of it. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I was kind of on the edge and I was kind of almost wanting to convince myself that I don't really need another Thelonious Monk record or particularly one that's a solo piano because I'll never listen to it, but uh, it's just su super charming. Um, a lot of the standards are all on here. Um, yeah, it's just kind of beautiful and playful and quirky and clunky at the same time, uh, as always with this stuff. Um, yeah, re really, really beautiful. Um,
it's a keeper. But I think the artwork is pretty terrible uh, for what it is. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It could have just been the time it came out. Um, I think this is some sort of US pressing, or maybe it's an Australian pressing. Um, no, it's, it's a New Zealand pressing. There we go. Um, okay. How are we for time? Let's keep going with some jazz. Um, this is a later, I think a 1975 pressing of Thelonious Monk East Coaston, which I think is something like his third record and came out in, in something like 56. I can't say that for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of grabbed this because it was really cheap. Um, I wasn't massively familiar with what it was or what to expect, but I did notice it's kind of a small band operation here. Um, it took me a, a long, lot of listens to sort of get my head around this and what was going on. Um, the, the first time it didn't really do much for me. It didn't really, I didn't feel like it had um, it, a, a drive or an impetus or, or a groove to it. Um, but I sort of got my head around it and really grew to love it. Um, in, in the end, there's some really nice subtle playing. Um, it's a keeper for me. Um, but I wouldn't say it's his, his best work or anything essential or if you're getting into Mingus, maybe give this a pass for a while. Um, it's nice. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird point for him, I guess. Um, before he sort of... Weird. Um, yeah, a, a strange point. The thing to note here, which I think is really interesting, is Bill Evans is playing piano on this. Oh, sticky. Um, yeah, East Coasting, Charles Mingus. Um, some more jazzy jazz. This is Sam Rivers Hughes. Uh, I found this uh, for 20 bucks at my local last week and it's an amazingly tidy position, position, condition. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy to get this. It's sort of been on a want list for a while. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, an essential mind blowing uh, free jazz thing. Um, it's definitely worth a listen. Um, it sounds very much like the sort of the loft jazz things that are on those uh, Wildflowers compilations, uh, if you guys know those ones. I've showed, I've shown them before a few times. Um, yeah, definitely has that sort of loft jazzy scene. These, these are taken from, uh, I think, three or four live uh, recorded sessions, um, and each track is sort of named after a jewel. Um, but on here you have um, C Summer B, so that was something that kind of grabbed my attention. Uh, Richard Davis, um, Harold Anderson, Norman Collins, Warren Smith, and Barry Outchell, so and obviously Sam Rivers. Uh, yeah, so there's a really great lineup on here. Um, it's good, it's really good. I, I find um, the stuff, because cause Sam Rivers plays a, a bunch of instruments on here. Um, I think he plays um, soprano, tenor, um, he plays flute, obviously. The tracks where he's playing flute are by far the strongest. They sort of uh, venture into a real spiritual jazz territory where the stuff with the saxophone is just okay for me. Um, but yeah, another, um, it's, it's, it's definitely a keeper and I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I just found that the flute work was way more interesting than anything else. Um, Hermeto Pascual, I'm not going to pronounce the title of this. And um, this is obviously a later album by him. I want to say it came out in sort of 84. Um, but it's still really interesting. Um, you may know this guy, he sort of played with Miles Davis on one of the electric albums, but I can't remember which one it was. Um, have I talked about this in a video before? Maybe not, I haven't. Anyway, um, yeah, it's again, it's very uh, fusion-y, it's very 1984. Um, it's kind of hard fusion in parts, but I kind of really like it. It's really interesting. Um, the cool thing that he does is he sort of puts in here lots of samples from um, Brazilian soccer TV. Uh, or highlights, or chants, or uh, radio commentary comes in halfway through. Um, it's still quite unique. Um, it does have some Latin, uh, South American rhythms to it, in parts, but not overbearing. Um, yeah, I, it's 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 a it's a jazz fusion album, 1984. That's the cover. I, I don't know how to describe it any more than that. <laughs> yeah, cool. So so everyone here are all. Um, from Brazil, I don't recognize any of the players apart from Hermeto. Um, yeah, that's what I, I think it's good. I think it's it's worth a listen. It's a, it's a pretty tight, tidy, interesting thing. I'm I'm keeping it because I don't have anything that's like that in the collection. I guess um, that's all I'll say.
Um, the last jazz one is this here. Um, again, I found this at the, I went into a, a big bulk collection and picked out this from a seller, um, something I didn't have, but I was aware of a couple of tracks from here. Um, but I've been really enjoying this. Um, the other night I was kind of just chilling, listening to it. It just really, really hit a nice tone. Um, something that I'm, I'm not massive on vocal jazz. Um, but this was just something different for me and I really enjoy it. Um, day in, day out is a track that I sort of knew before, um, but the whole thing is really solid. Um, this is an original US press. Um, it's on Verve, isn't it, obviously? Yeah, it's on Verve. I won't talk about it too much. Uh, just beautiful, gorgeous, um, playful, happy, sad. Um, just has, has a really nice tone, and a really nice um, rhythm to her voice, I guess. Okay, getting a bit weirder. Um, I talked about Laurel Halo in my previous video and how I was listening to Quarantine. This is her third release called Chance of Rain. I found this really cheap locally, uh, so I had to grab it. Um, it sort of heads in a more um, produced direction, I guess. Um, the the drum, the bass is probably a little more, bit more prominent. Um, I guess you would call it electronic dub, whatever you would call that stuff. Um, I'm not feeling very excited about explaining this one, to be honest. Um, it's it's good. It's really interesting. Um, I've been enjoying it. Um, I need to give it more time, though. Um, Laura Halo, Chance of Rain. This came out on Hyperdub in like 2007 or 8, something like that. Yeah. On the fence. I don't know why I'm giving a review of if I'm going to keep these or not after every one. Just like a habit thing. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what that's, that's about. Okay, three New Zealand records that I picked up at the record fair. So if you're not interested in that stuff, you can kind of end it now. Um, this is a seven inch on an expressway, a label I've talked about a few times before. I might actually do an expressway video at some point um, and talk about it in more detail. This is expressway number 11. This is Peter Jeffries and Robbie Murr. Um, I, ha I have these both these tracks on other compilations, but it's nice to get the, uh, the seven inch. Unfortunately, uh, Peter Jeffries, who I think has released some of the most beautiful New Zealand music out there has now sort of become a conspiracy theorist and sort of gone down that whole rabbit hole of um, COVID not being real and we are how we are sort of being suppressed in New Zealand even though we've only had one lockdown and we spent most of the year completely not in lockdown and free and life is normal um, we're still being very oppressed by the government apparently anyway that's not important um yeah, I, I guess you would just call this sort of experimental post-punk, um, kind of noisy, kind of grungy. Um, yeah, very, very distinctive vocalist. His brother is Graham Jeffries, who's in the Cake Kitchen. Um, this is something that um, I only vaguely recognize, but my mate told me that I should pick it up, and I'm really glad I did. This is Massive Stereo Sellout on uh, Flying Nun. Came out in 1984. Um, the artwork is pretty terrible and pretty dated. But um, yeah, this is this is a really interesting listen. It's kind of like if you know the skeptics, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. But I I don't want to say I enjoy it more, but I'm really enjoying. It. I've been playing this heaps. Um, kind of dark dark moody sounds um, with electronic. It's it's cool. Like the the discogs tag is rhythmic noise. If that means anything, um, as a description. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool. It came out in 1988, I think. Um, but yeah, it's super interesting. Um, just a mi mixture of, it's kind of like industrial was probably not really the right word for it. Um, but a really interesting, um, really moody kind of sounds uplifting in parts. Um, the, the main guy behind, or one of the guys behind this is called Steve Roach. And the only reason I know his name is because my friend who runs a record label here just released one of his cassettes that was kind of lost to time. Um, and that's called Gorgonzola on Epic Sweep, which I'm plugging because it's my friend's record label. Um, yeah, so, and then the last one is something that I kind of didn't think I would enjoy as much as I have, but it's this thing here, which is called Sound Cues by Soluble Fish, um, which is essentially Bill Doreen. Um, and it's just kind of a strange, all over the place kind of record. Um, it's very... Um, like a, a mixture of um, found sounds, spoken word, um, I guess full tracks, um, 
noisy, scratchy bits. Um, it's kind of just all over the place, but it works really, really well. Um, some, yeah, some really strange spoken word um, things from a lady with a really strong uh, Glaswegian accent. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of brilliant. I don't know how to describe it. It's um, not, not consistent in any way. Um, it's just weird and strange, and it's very Bill Doreen esque There's the only way I can describe it if you're familiar with him, which probably most people maybe are not, <laughs> which doesn't help anyone. Yeah, um, there's like saxophones and congas and strange scraping instruments on here. Really nice guitar playing. I don't know. It's kind of all over the shop. Um, very strange. I wouldn't say it's like avant-garde or anything like that, um, but it's very unusual. I, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised. Um, I thought I wouldn't be into it, but I am. Um, so that's where we're at. I'm very conscious that the camera is going to run out of battery. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I just want to point out, actually, in the background here, I don't know if you can see these, but these are um, some artworks done by um, Diana over at Digging in the Crate. You can also check her out on Instagram. Um, I think her name is Crade1, C-R-A-D-E. Um, I'm going to put some little footage in here of the close-ups, but you can buy these little postcards uh, from her directly. Um, they're really amazing. Um, just some beautiful, beautiful illustrations here of um, people that we all know and love in the VC. Um, yeah, I love them. I kind of want to get bigger versions. Um, so yeah, um, flick her a message uh, and support her and get some amazing artwork. And, and they're really well-priced. Um, she's a very, very talented illustrator. Um, yeah really beautiful I, I just saw her this morning that she did one for robert wyatt which is super cool as well um yeah check them out um they're a really nice addition to my new space um but yeah there we go that's the end of the video thank you for watching that one felt a little bit rushed but i don't know what to say that's the end um yeah i guess i'll see you all soon thank you again for everyone that comments and likes and all that sort of stuff um see ya